And today's presentation will be given by Dr. Huang Haiyan, Director and Senior Curator of Guangdong Folk Art Museums in Canton or Guangzhou, China. Uh, Dr. Huang accomplished her PhD program from the Department of History at Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, China. Her PhD thesis focused on the urban-rural relationships of Ming and Qing dynasties through an investigation into the ancestral halls established by the clans with the same surname in the southeastern coast of China during the Ming Qing period. In recent years, her interest has shifted to the arts and crafts of Guangdong during the Ming and Qing dynasties. Based on the studies of the collection of Guangdong Folk Art Co Museum, she is dedicated to the topics um, concerning the developments of can Canton's arts and crafts under the backgrounds of the Sino-European interactions and trades. And she also has created many uh, special exhibitions dedicated to this form. Sorry, to this topic. Um, today, she will be speaking on um, her talk titled Golden Age, Canton Arts and Crafts in the Context of East-Western Cultural Interactions During the 18th and Early 19th Centuries. Please join me in welcoming her. Um, um, good afternoon. Um, it is my great honor to have the opportunity to be here uh, to share my research of the um, Arts and Crafts in, in Canton. Um, today, I will uh, introduce. I will introduce my museum first. I came from um, Guangdong Folk Arts Museum, and it it was established in 1915, 1959, and is located inside the most famous piece of Qing Dynasty architecture in the Guangdong region, uh, the Chen Clan Ancestral Hall. Um, the building is listed as an important heritage site and under state protection. Um, since 2017, uh, this year, the museum has been ranked as the first great museum in China. Um, my museum has built up a, a rich collection over the years, ranging from precious cultural relics to fine modern arts. Um, today, I will uh, examine the, uh, the arts and crafts of Canton, and we know um, Canton situated on the shore of the South China Sea. Um, it has been the geography hub of the maritime Silk Road for over 2,000 years. Um, from this map, um, we can we can find that um, after the age of discovery in the uh, 15th century, the trading areas of Canton expand from uh, the Indian Ocean uh, to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, from 1757 to 1840, the Canton system made Canton one of the centers of world trade. Um, um, this is the export glass uh, painting of the plate. Uh, it was made in 18th to early 19th century. Uh, uh, it was about uh, the famous 13 factories in Canton. Um, I mean, as we know, um, in Canton, there, uh, in the Canton under the Canton system, there was uh, there were a lot of craft works made in Canton and exported uh, to the Europe and the and the US. Um, these are the uh, the highlights of cash words uh, showed in the China Gallery of the V&A Museum in London. Uh, we can see this. This is the wallpaper, um, the Canton painting enamel plate. Uh, they were all made in Canton in about 18th century. Um, uh, we can see this is the ivory boat and the ivory bowl uh, with several, several uh, ivory bowl and the ivory folding fan. Um, today I will uh, take the um, Canton painting enamels and the, and the folding fans collected in my museum as an example to examine how the, uh, the Canton uh, became as um, um, uh, <laughs> sorry 
uh, became as a um, golden age. Um, the first, the, uh, first of all, I will introduce the Canton painting enamels. As we know, uh, the carves of painting enamels in China came from the West. Um, and the first stop of, uh, of the introduction of Western painting enamels into China was Canton. And at that time, the missionaries with painting enamel skill uh, was arrived first in Canton. They bought not only the Western painting enamels, but also the crafts of these works into China. And in Canton, they taught this craft to the craftsmen. And, and the Kangxi Emperor was very nice, uh, very fond of the painting enamels and tried to produce them in his court. Um, uh, because of this, uh, in September uh, 1716, uh, the governor of Guangdong province, uh, his name is, was Yang Ling, um, presented four enamel craftsmen to the court uh, for painted enamel uh, manufacture. And they, uh, the, the, they, uh, the enamel craftsmen also brought the tentacles of uh, producing paint enamels and improve the arts of this kind. Um, from this on, uh, from this respect, the painting enamels of the Qing, uh, Qing Palace had a very close li relationship with Canton. Um, as we know, a Canton painting enamel manufacturer not only satisfies local and imperial needs and the markets of other provinces, but were also made for the foreign market. Uh, some craftsmen in Canton went abroad to make painting enamels. Uh, during the late years of the Yongzheng, uh, Yongzheng ring, uh, Cantonese workshops imitated the yellow color enamels of the Qing Palace. Um, and in Qianlong, Qianlong ring, um, Canton painting enamels have I, I think it has had three char characters. Um, the first and the second one, and, and the second ones is that they, the painting enamels made by the uh, imperial workshop uh, during the Qianlong uh, follow those of the Kangxi and Yongzheng. Uh, we can see that uh, from this, uh, these objects, and we can see the size of branches and, and the flowers and the yellow grays. And it looked light, uh, looked very light, the ones uh, in of Kangxi and, and Yongzheng. But um, another caricature, caricature is, was that uh, from the Qianlong ring, the imperial workshop uh, sent design samples to Guangdong Maritime Customs and request, requested them painting enamels to match match the ones uh, made in the uh, imperial workshops. As a result, uh, Canton manufactured a great amount of painting enamels and the reflected uh, craft developed rapidly. Um, these objects made um, by the uh, enamel workshop, workshop and we called it Fa uh, Lang Zhuo of the imperial workshops. Um, we can see that this is this is um, bottom stamp of uh, Qianlong Lianzhi uh, made in the Qianlong range. And um, and these objects um, are made by Guangdong Maritime Customs and according to the samples from the imperial workshops. But the bottom stamps uh, was Da Qing Qianlong Lianzhi. It, it add more two more character da qing. Oh. Um, um, we can see that different from those of Kangxi and Yongzheng, the painting enamels of the Qianlong range included many figures, um, and the figures uh, we can see that it was combined um, the Chinese uh, traditional wear forms and the decoration of Western figure, de figure designs. Um, this pair of painting ways uh, with Western figures 
designs was a typical work made by Guangdong Maritime Customs according to the sample of the imperial workshop during the Qianlong range. And we can see that uh, this pair of ways has features that indicate that it, re uh, it originated from Guangdong Maritime Customs. Uh, the one was that uh, the inside of the vase uh, was painted with lake blue grace. And on the bottom, uh, there is a stamp, really, uh, uh, the same as the, the plate uh, I showed you before, and made Da uh, Qing Qian Long Nian Zhi. It's the same, uh, same stamp. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this canton enamel made by Guangdong Maritime Customs has a Western landscape and figures as the theme of its design. And the painting style of these figures were mainly based on the Western figures in a book called a Description of Tributaries of the August Qing. Uh, we, we can find that it, uh, these figures <laughs> looks like this one uh, very much. And this box uh, was, and uh, uh, this figures was from the book, a uh, description of tributary of the August team. And after that, the Canton painting enamels made by Guangdong Maritime Customs led to the uh, prosperous development of the Canton painting enamels manufacturer. As a result, uh, Canton uh, produced a great amount, amount of export painting enamels during the mid and late Qing Dynasty after the Qing, Qianlong, Qianlong range. <coughs> and this is a painting enamel plate from the mid to late Qing Dynasty uh, with um, a painting of Romans of the West Chamber, and but its bottom stamp uh, was uh, Sang Xin, but not uh, the Da Qing Qianlong Nian Zhi. So uh, it was it was not made by the uh, the Guangdong Maritime Customs. And <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and export. Canton painted in Namos did not have the character, characteristic of the customized products of the court. They did not have the bottom stem of Da Qing Qian Long Nian Zhi, and the inside grays were white, or white or pink. Uh, this was pink, pink grays, and this was the white grays. And then we will turn to the uh, folding fans. I, I will, um, as we note, uh, folding fans was not invented in China. They were introduced in, into China from Korea and Japan around 988. After that time, folding fans became popular and were used as tribute to the court. On um, this round silk fan with ivory print was a, a tribute fan. And it was uh, collected in my museum. And as we know, long before the establishment of the East India companies, the Venetians um, uh, brought the folding fans uh, from the East to the West. And during the 17th to 18th century, a great amount of Chinese shoes, porcelains, and teas were exported from the Canton port to Europe. And at the same time, Chinese artistic household items, such as fans, um, and wallpaper, lacquer, rails, and furniture were also transported to the West uh, for the uh, Europeans. <coughs> and this is a um, a book written by Great uh, was in the city of Canton, and from this book we can we can see that uh, there were a lot of uh, fan shop uh, in Canton. Uh, this is 
uh, the vendors making and selling fans on the streets of Canton. <coughs> and the history of the, uh, the mass production of expert fans in Canton has several phases in terms of uh, materials and carved tentacles. And during the Kangxi and Yongzheng reigns and the early uh, Qianlong range, precious and exquisite ivory fans were involved. And beginning in the mid Qianlong range, tortoiseshell uh, tortoise, tortoise shells and gold painting black lacquer and silver and shells were used as fan leaves and sticks. Then uh, paper leaves, uh, silk leaves, and sandalwood leaves came into use after the uh, Jiaqing reign. Uh, this development, development reflected the trade and market leads of different periods, which were in accordance, in accordance with the changes of production cost uh, <laughs> from expensive to cheap. On the first age, of uh, the first stage uh, was the ivory. Uh, the ivory played a major role uh, from late 17th to <coughs> late 18th century. Um, and Harry Cordier wrote in his book, uh, he said uh, the missionaries in Beijing tried their best to find articles which were favorite of patrons and friends in Paris, such as ivory fans and so on. Um, the appearance of ivory folding fans was connected to the ivory trade. And as we note, in the 16th century, Western merchants developed a sea chain of ivory between Af Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. Uh, in the early uh, 16th, 16th, the Portugal reg regularly uh, transported ivory from uh, on the Indian West Coast to the Canton port. And later, the Netherlands and the British East India Company also participated in this kind of trade. Together, they made Canton into the only and most important center for ivory manufacture in, in China. Um, this is uh, ivory brace fan of the late Qianlong range. Um, we can find that uh, at the center of the of this fan, uh, there is a small ellipse uh, card with casini, and indicate that this fan was customized for casini. And the second stage is <coughs> sorry. <coughs> the second stage was the age of diversity. Um, uh, uh, we can find that um, uh, besides the, the ivory fan, there was a gilt silver uh, filigree brace fan with enamel landscape and flower design and the open work uh, toy toy shell brace fan. And f at the center of uh, this fan, um, there is also a small uh, ellipse. A card with Junior indicated that this friend was customized for Junior. And these are the lacquer fans in, uh, made in 18,000. 18, um, the, the earliest period of expert lacquer fans was around uh, 1790 to 1830. Uh, these fans were, were very closely related to the export lacquer furniture and boxes of this period. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, these are the shoe folding fans with embroidered design and ivory sticks, and it, uh, it was made in the mid uh, 19th century. This sample fan, uh, this was a sample fan, and it was made during the mid 19th century. And we can find that uh, there were several materials, um, uh, sticks, uh, 
and one is uh, this uh, this is the ivory and the tortoise shell tortoise shell and the enamel and the mother of pearl and so on and um, it was a, a sample French for the customers to select uh, to select which materials they uh, each, they they should uh, choose to to make the fence. And then we will turn to the uh, to the subject of the of the fence. Um, I think the choice of the size and subjects were <coughs> related to the requirements of the train. Um, this ivory bridge fence of the mid 18th century with painting the site of happy fishermen. The paintings on the fan leaves are similar to the popular Chinese Imari style of expert personas. And during the late 18th century, there were the size of the 13 factories and one part, one part and, and courage on folding fans as one other export goods. And Mandarin, Mandarin designs were commonly seen on export canton enameled porcelains of the Qianlong range. And during the Jiaqing and Daoguang reigns, nearly all paper folding fans were painted with Mandarin designs. Uh, these fans were called uh, Mandarin fans. Um, and we we'll found that uh, uh, we we'll found the interviewing elements of China and the West on the on uh, on these folding fans. Uh, the ivory the ivory sticks uh, among here. The, yeah, the ivory sticks are carved in relief and open work with the size of two dancing two dancing pairs of Western ladies and gentlemen in formal dress at the center, and two naked uh, Western women on each side of them. Um, the guards, the guards uh, have open work and relief carvings of uh, Western figures in formal dress. And uh, the surface, at uh, the surface of this fan uh, is painted with Chinese traditional bamboo a uh, Cantonese embroidery pocket is an um, is an accessory to the fan. Uh, on one side of the pocket is embroidered embroidered with two two crabs, and and plants uh, means uh, which means successful in the imperial examination. Er jia chuan lu. And the other side uh, is embroidered with the Asian Chinese characters. Um, and I, I would like to examine the, uh, the folding fans made in Europe. And the first folding fan made in Europe uh, was inspired by an, by an imitate to the folding imitate the folding fans that had been introduced by merchants from China or Japan. At the end of 17th century, folding fans completely replaced circular face, circular fans, and the and and just like the fans uh, made in China, the materials of the fan sticks were uh, were were diverse. Uh, uh, Consists of ivory, a pearl, tortoise shell, etc. The carved tentacles including include carving and open work, and they were decorated with gold, silver, and expensive stone. Um, the decorated images were printed by a uh, uh, copper plate uh, engraving. There were an increasing number of fan makers involved in this manufacture. And various skills for fan makers were also established, uh, especially in France and and the uh, British. Um, um, uh, we will uh, we will hold an exhibition uh, on uh, September 
and on December the first uh, this year, um, about the uh, um, the fans collected in my museum and the friends uh, borrowed from the uh, three museums in the uh, in the UK. Uh, they were the the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and the um, and the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge and the Fan Museum in Greenwich, London. Um, these are the the long fans from the VNA Museum. Um, they were made in the uh, they were made uh, probably uh, in France or or uh, in the uh, British and the um, and the Dutch. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, uh, we can see that uh, this this is the British friend. Um, uh, made in made in France and in 1775 uh, to uh, 18,000 and and this was made in British or French uh, in 1820 to eight, 1830. <coughs> this one, <coughs> this brace French uh, was made in 1820 to 40. I found a book, uh, uh, China and What Exposition um, and Historical Records uh, from 1851 to 1940 and published in London. And from this, from this article, we can see that in the 18th and 19th century, France and China almost monop monopolized uh, the, fan manufacture, the fan manufacture of the world. As for the lacquer fans, China was low dubbed the best place of orange. And in terms of carving and jeweling crafts of wood, bone, ivory, and mother of pearl, and China had no com competitor, competitor. And even in manufacture of ordinary fans, the fans from China had a novel design, bright colored, uh, beautiful paintings, and excellent crafts, and so on. <laughs> And, and the book written by David Hover, a, a Tale of Three Cities. And he said in 1752, uh, the report of a petition by the English fan makers appears in, in the uh, Bristol Journal, complaining of the vast uh, quantity of fans from, from the East, which were undercutting their price, prices. And evid evidently, the fans themselves, by virtue of being cheaper, were more expendable, and those that uh, have survived are the final examples. And we also found, uh, 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 sorry, I think um, uh, from the Euro, uh, on the Euro fence, we can find uh, some Chinese <coughs> elements on it. Uh, the one was the shimwasheri, and and this uh, is the fan, uh, the folding fans uh, from the VNA museum, and uh, with the shimwasheri landscape, and these figures, uh, his uh, her her face looks like a uh, European, but uh, she just in just in the Chinese Chinese just in Chinese. No. Sorry, <laughs> my English is too too bad. <laughs> Um, and these are the painting uh, paper fan, and it was the uh, ivory sticks, uh, but the figures uh, was also uh, shimashiri. And and this is the fan uh, also from the VNA museum. Um, it, it was possibly possible uh, possibly made in France or Italy. Uh, in 18th century, uh, 18th centuries, and the uh, the center, the center forms has a skin of with two lovers, uh, in classical jets showing the men uh, carving their names on a trick chant, and on 
either side are figures of uh, are figures of Chinese men. Uh, this man, a Chinese man in shades of blue, and they are surrounded by formal flowers, formal flowers uh, in the Chinese manner. Um, on the back are Chinese men painted in a style imitating Chinese painting. Um, my conclusion is that um, the, pe the period from the 18th, 18th to first half of the 19th century was a golden age for Canton, and it was also a glorious period for the development of Cantonese arts and crafts. On one hand, uh, foreign goods and crafts uh, permitted every aspect of Cantonese social life, resulting in deep changes in Cantonese crafts. And many new craft manufacturers were rising, and Canton became one of the largest art centers in southern, in, in southern China. They also influenced the imperial court and other centers of of arts and crafts in China, uh, such as uh, Suzhou, uh, to various extents. On the other hand, Canton opened a window for the West to learn about China and Chinese culture. The export, uh, the export coverage from Canton, the created uh, Western social life, a uh, fashion of uh, evocating Chinese arts uh, became uh, the contemporary world in Europe. Um, in addition to this, uh, I think uh, we should pay more attention to the importance of Canton craftsmen by putting them at the center of two networks uh, uh, between Canton and the court in Beijing, as well as between China and Europe. The fight uh, demonstra demonstration of changes in styles of both the painting enamels and fans can make the argument visually. Um, thank you. That's at the end. Um, thank you so much. And we're going to have an interpreter for the Q&A. Um, our interpreter is uh, Sheng Yihui, who is a graduate student at the, the A. Yeah, Asian Languages and Cultures Department. Also, please, for the recording, uh, please use the mic. Um, so when you ask your question, I can, I can pass it. Yeah. <laughs> In common English, enamel will sometimes refer to uh, a low fire glaze on a metal surface and is also used to describe, to describe colorful decoration on porcelain. When you use the word enamel, yeah. what substrate do you refer to? Uh, I, I refer to the, um, the copper, the yeah, the copper, on yeah. copper, and not the not the porcelain, yeah. Do we have do we have any idea of the numbers, the amount of of the ceramics and folding fans that would have been sent to Europe? Um, I, 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 I have no idea of the number of the, of the amount. I, I think it's very large. Um, and I have a, a, a number of um, about in 1870s um, and one year for one year um, there were over five uh, sorry 80,000 fans exported to the Europe and, and the US. 18,000 yeah. 80, 80, 80, yeah. 80, pieces of fans, of folding fans, to Europe and, and the US.
this period also, well, in the latter period that you are covering, is a period of uh, elaborately decorated ceramic ware and also furniture with an inlaid design. Uh, how do these inter, uh, influence your subject of today, and do you have holdings in your museum of both furniture and porcelain, like the Famille Rose and the Famille Verret that they referred to in, in, in Europe? Ning 当今就是在欧洲的这些瓷器和家具的收藏在这个前农和就是十八世纪的时候其实建立了很多的新行业就是包括我刚才提到的法郎这个这些新行业一直就延续到现在也就是说现在的很多的装饰艺术其实都是来
看从这些工艺品里里边看到它的工艺其实特别的精美，但是在这个呃 Canton City 呃 System 就是结束之后。呃，其实很多的工艺品其实越来越粗糙，还有就是他们的材质，就是我刚才其实提到有从呃贵重的象牙一直到最后的呃纸质的纸质的扇子，这些里边其实能够看到这个材料是越来越普通啊，所以我们讲到这个 Golden Age 的时候，我们不会把后面的放进来。所以这个 Golden Age 就是到下面战争。对对对。Um, so because she mentioned about the Golden Age, which ends um, price, pricely at the um, Opium War 1840, um, so after that, the, the, the uh, kind of the qualities and the material becomes, more, uh, becomes worse and worse, and also the materials used to produce those um, porcelain, ceramics, and furniture become quite um, worse and quite bad. So that's why she stopped. So that, that means the, that indicates the end of the Golden Age. So that's why she stopped um, after the, uh, at the Opium War. <laughs> so Professor Austin asked um, because uh, he 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 thinks the pictures are too small for us to see the details, and he want he would like to know if we can see like enlarged pictures. Just <laughs> Okay. So, uh, uh, because she she said she will send uh the original she because she doesn't have the uh original pictures right here, so she will find um send uh more original pictures later on. To what extent that these, did these artifacts with European influence achieve a market in China among connoisseurs and wealthy families, and did they circulate internally um, up outside of the imperial court? Um, 富有的范围内，民在民间以及在民间，尤其是民间比较上等的、比较富有的家庭里面，呃，有或者是就是中国范围内的流传，而不是说仅仅是运往欧洲。嗯、um, ，其实这个有这个欧洲风格影响的这些工艺品，呃，我们能够看到的是在清呃皇宫里边，就是清清宫里边会有。然后呢，就是我们在呃一些。记录和外就是外交画里边看到行商，行商会喜欢这些东西，但是在现在，行商知道吗？就是十三行的那个行商，啊，但是在现在的博物馆里边，呃，就是在中国原来在中国很少看到这些，现在已经很少看到。我们现在博物馆的收藏很多都是，呃，这这十年来从。从欧洲或者是从美国再再买回去啊。Um, so, uh, she answers that um, basically what we've seen about the uh, uh, in China that those um, porcelains and ceramics with European characteristics are found mostly uh, found in the in the court. So um, for the and also she also mentions that. Um, the the com the merchants of the thirteen um, industries in China uh, in Guangdong they also like those European um, Euro uh, European um, uh, porcelains and ceramics with European characteristics. Um, however, um, 
there is quite uh, there's not too many evidence about the circul inner circulation of the European um, porcelain of the the porcelain ceramics with European um, characteristic features um, in in China. Um, all they found are, are, f are bought um, in from the Europe. Um, my question is relevant to that question. So, because in the conclusion, you put this um, a conclusion, some um, very interesting idea about two networks, and the one with the core, the one with the Europe. So, um, based on the answer to the last question, there's no other networks um, in China um, about these Euro European style object. So, what's the reason for that? Is um, because the court ban the trade on that? Just only court can use this style. 就是因为他没有在十八世纪十九世纪没有在国内流传就只是和皇室还有和欧洲流传那么就比如说江南就没有这些东西就是我就是好奇他的原因是什么是不是就是皇室就是说不能其他人用只能他们用没有其实在我
而进展，就是这些瓷器是怎么怎么传播，啊，我我我觉得是应该是这样子。So for the international trade of the porcelains in ceramics, um, <coughs> it first exported from the from Canton to Korea and and Japan, and then went to the Southeast Asia, and later on, um, it went to the went to India. Um, after that, during the 15th century, it went to Britain and Europe, other European countries. So she believed that the trade of the of the porcelains and the objects were developed as as the, the, the sea trade routines become more and more developed. In the so-called Golden Age, do you have, for example, the Guangzhou-made pottery and pottery is also to India? Because if it is the same route to India, do you have, for example, the pottery in India is also to India? Um, is so the oh, sorry. Oh, so I'm curious also about the um, the sort of the during the golden age whether the circulation of products also had stops in other colonies or whether it was just strictly between uh, Europe and Canton. Um, in Guangzhou, is my so called uh golden age. The time, that the pottery is already actually that the train is already already is 15th century. Already reached to Europe. So. Also, 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 我看到的就是广州做的瓷器，呃，其实那个时候的外销瓷器已经是已经是在欧洲了，就是在印度、印度和阿拉伯地区的，其实是，呃，我想应该是唐宋时期的，就是，而且这些瓷器也不是在广州生产的，但是广州生产的那一些我们叫广彩瓷呢，已经是到了十八世纪以后，它就直接到欧欧洲了。Um, so during the golden age, the the routine, the road from the trading road before uh, between Europe and China, and especially the Europe and Canton has been established. So um, in that sense, um, there is a direct um, trade interaction between China and um, and Europe and Britain, France. Um, so for the Arabic Arabic and in, uh, regions and India. Um, the porcelains um, they imported from China were usually from the Tang and Song period, um, which is much early, um, earlier than the than the Qing, uh, than the Golden Golden Age she talked about. About those earlier exports to Southeast Asia. India, uh, were those export porcelains uh, from ports other than Canton? Oh, sorry, I, I didn't translate. Yes, um, she mentioned in her Chinese answer that yes, um, the Tang and Song period porcelains were um, from uh, were not manufactured in Guangdong. Um, so for the for the places of the many of the of the um, for the origins of those um, early ex, uh, exported porcelains and ceramics, they were made um, in in Qingdezhen, another very famous um, place for ceramics in China, and also uh, Fujian and also Changsha, which is in other provinces. Um, so about the uh, pictorial decorations on enamels or or the fans. Uh, you showed us a lot of different sort of motifs where the figures and landscapes are combined. Are they just the generic uh, sceneries or does it carry some kind of narratives uh, borrowed from Chinese xiao uh, shuo or, you know, I think you showed us, I don't remember whether it was Chinese or European that has a xi or xi xi yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so is that, is that sort of narrative also carried alongside the decoration to Europe or is it just got detached? Um, 就是问题就是, uh, 您讲到了很多中西风格融合的这一些图画 
他们是不是也有本也有一些他们自己的这个原本的故事在里面？比如说您讲到那个关于《西厢记》的那个那个图那个那个图画、嗯、那个装饰，它是有关于《西厢记》的故事的。那在出口欧洲的瓷器的这些图画上面、图案上面，是不是也有这个呃也有它原本的故事在里面？还是仅仅就是一个中西不同风格的融合？嗯嗯，如果是像在扇子和。其实，其实欧洲的呃，出口欧洲的图案里边，包括珐琅，它它的那个跟欧洲文化，就是跟西方文化相关的图案，其实有两种。一种呢，就是它就是用的还真的是欧洲呃西方的那个宗教的神话故事，呃，这个呢一般是他们有有图有图样可以照着来做的，呃，那么另外一种就是我刚才提到的那个，呃。没有没有参照，但是是他们认为的西方人的形象。那就比如他参照的《黄青直贡图》里边的，那个图、那个、那个、那个画像，他是直接抄那个，就是 imitate 那个画像在上面。这是有两种，有一种是真的是，呃呃，有有这个西方的呃宗教文化在里边一模一样的是有的。嗯、um, ，就你这。Or do I translate? Um, so uh, the, uh, her answer is that first um, there are two kind of categories of the pictorial um, uh, images of the on the on the ceramics and porcelains or the in, on the animals. Uh, animals. So the first one is the um, they have religious stories, the Western religious um, stories that are kind of um, the craftsmen learn from. Either illustrations or pictures of Western uh, religious um, uh, Western religious stories, and then they kind of copied that to the to the to the animals or or the other objects. And then um, there's the other type. The, the second category is, um, is the craftsman's imagination of the Western of how Western uh, people looked. Um, they usually use the book that she mentioned. This like <coughs> illustrated book. They men she mentioned um, in the. <coughs> In his um, in her presentation, that the design, the depictions of tributaries of the August um, Qing. So this is the the second. Sec so that that uh, pictorial image is basically um, shows the craftsmen, the Eastern people's um, imagination of how Western people looked. 嗯，这个跟那个跟那个《寻花》story 是有点类似的，就是在《寻花》story 里边，其实很多人画的画的中国的。中国人或者是中国的建筑什么的，实际上他们没有去过中国，他是他想象中的中国的图样。那么中国人在画这个西方人的图，那个那个面貌或者是风景，也是有有一些是他想象中的风景。啊、uh, okay. ，So this is similar to the she she n o s e r y she mentioned um in the uh in the in the this uh. In the presentation, <laughs> that shenanigans mean, basically means the European people's imagination of um, Chinese um, people's faces and their um, Im Im uh, images, and then this kind of um, thing is the uh, um, is kind of a reverse way of the shenanigans, which basically it's the Chinese craftsman's imagination of European people. Okay, this is a question more about history than the ceramics or anything. At, at one point, Emperor Qianlong told the British, uh, Mr. McCartney, he, who was trying to sell some things to, to China and uh, to the, the Qing court, he told him, I can't think of anything that we need, that uh, we have everything that we have uh, that we need. And how, does, how do we get from this point to this Great era of cultural diffusion, where the where the Guangzhou is the is the midpoint between the the Qing court and and Europe. Um, his question is about about a historical question. Is when uh uh European emperors, scholars, or teachers came to the Qing court to meet Qianlong, Qianlong said that we have all the things we need. We don't need your things. That in light of this background, uh. 广州的这些呃，这个珐琅的技工，他们是怎么怎么在这个背景下呃，影响到他，影响到这个呃瓷器的对外的这样一个一个对外的一个扩展
。嗯，我想这个可能可能不是同一个层面，就是就是马卡里，就是他他们他们呃，就是带来带来带到中国的很多东西，可能是呃科技的或者是等等这些方面，然后。<笑>怎么这个问题比较难回答？就是我不我我我没有想过，就是在这个这个就是乾隆皇帝认为，就是他其实是一个比较呃，就是他很很很很自大的认为呃中国什么都有的时候，呃，我想一想应该怎么回答，就是。就是在在呃，我我自己认为在呃出口的出口的这个陶瓷或者是我们讲到的这些珐琅的时候，他们其实满足的是我觉得是市场，就是市场的需要，而呃没有说更多的呃，应该跟这个不是一回事吧？我觉得跟这个这个就是马马卡里带来就是呃进贡进呃建乾隆的这个事情好像。Um, so first, it's a kind of a difficult question, and also um, uh, she believes that what Macaulay brought um, into the Qianlong, uh, into the uh, Qianlong court is kind of has a, it's, it's different from basically what porcelains um, or ceramics exported from Guangzhou, because um, what Macaulay brought are basically the technologies and also technical objects while um, Qianlong kind of mistakenly and arrogantly rejected and believed that um, they don't need that. Um, but for the, can, the, the porcelain, the, the animals and also kind of uh, objects produced in Guangzhou, they're more in Canton, they're more like a, a fulfillment of the requirement of the, of the, of the market. So they basically, they, they represent two different kind of, two different categories of, of, of objects.